Chiefs Kingdom, welcome back to another episode of All Chiefed Up. We're back with another podcast for that ass. Steve Jawan Taylor is being picked on by the NFL. We have proof. Andy has now got proof, and Andy's had enough of this crap. Let's talk about it. Before we get the show started, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help your boys out, help us get to 20,000 subscribers by the end of the season. Mike, Andy's had enough of this crap. Like King Curtis, Chicken Nuggets. I've had enough of this crap. I don't like this crap. I don't blame him, though, because Jawan Taylor's obviously getting picked on by the NFL. We've all seen it. We see it in every NFL game by every NFL tackle, and the only one that they're calling this garbage on is Jawan Taylor. That's it, Steve. Uh, Charles Goldman, A to Z Sports Today, come out with this article, and he actually says, no, Jawan Taylor did not get benched on Sunday. Andy Reid mentioned that he had a laceration on the inside of his mouth. But I'm told the team pulled Jawan Taylor intentionally. It wasn't just to sit him as they began to rest our other starters in a blowout either. The team did so in order to have Prince Tego and Nogo align at a similar depth to see if the officials would call the penalty. Steve, I remember two guys, looks a lot like me and you, that said something very similar yesterday. Watch this. I don't like that Andy put in Prince Tega. Coming out of the half, that kind of validated what the NFL's doing, in my opinion. You come up with a theory that maybe he put in Prince so Prince could set up the exact same way as Taylor, and then when they didn't throw the flag, you had it on film, and you could take that to the NFL and be like, why are you calling it on Taylor and not on everybody else? That was your theory. But I don't think you should have validated it at all. Andy needs to come right, out and be like, know, look, this is ridiculous. It's got to stop. I can't believe they started this hit job on him since week one. They're going to continue it. And yeah. then the thing is... If you notice, Prince Tega, when he come in the first few snaps, he lined up very, very close to the line of scrimmage. Way closer. So I was like, well, Steve, that's kind of throwing off your theory. Well, after about four or five plays, we noticed on one of the pass plays, he was set back just as far or further than Jawan Taylor ever was, and they did not throw the flag. So maybe the Chiefs were trying to get that on film, and maybe now they're going to go and have a legit beef here and be like, look, you're calling it on one and not calling it on another. This is getting ridiculous. They're not we calling don't need on anyone crap. else in the NFL. Every no. one of them do it. Look, every freaking tackle does it. Steve, you said it right there in the clip. You said everybody else in the NFL is doing it. We have proof of it. You ready to go? This is Jawan Taylor right here. This is the play that got him called. If you look, he's all the way on the right side of the screen. He is pretty much at the same depth, if not not as deep, as Donovan Smith on the left side. Here it is right. zoomed in a little bit more. You can see it. He's right there. Uh, and some people will be like, well, he's not on the belt line. He's not on the belt. Look, it doesn't matter. Uh, we got some other ones. Here's Trent Williams. Is Trent Williams on the belt line? <laughs> not even close. Uh, here's Dallas. Here's uh, Tyron Smith, left tackle. Where's he at? He's further he's back than Dak planet. Prescott. Yeah. This dude's not even in the same field as the rest of the team. Uh, let's go look at Orlando Brown Jr. Him and <laughs> the guard are past the center. And the right tackle. Uh, Bro. Let's look at this one that happened in the Vikings game yesterday. Christian Darisaw and Brian O'Neill, both tackles, not even on the same planet. And then look at this. You've got a wide receiver that's three yards over the line of scrimmage, and they can't even call that. That didn't even get called. So he's over the line. These guys aren't even on the line. They don't call anything. You want to know why? They were too busy nitpicking Jawan Taylor all day to be able to see anybody else doing anything wrong. This is absurd. This is ridiculous, Steve. And to be honest, I've had enough of it. Andy seems to have enough of it. Patrick's got enough of it. Uh, let me play this clip, and I'll let you respond to it. He, he might be being picked on just a little bit here, but uh, uh, I felt today. Uh, I thought they did a good job the week before, but... Today, I thought it was too much. I mean, you know, I, I wasn't seeing it. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, still, we got to keep working on that. It's wild to me. I mean, when you go back and look at the tablet and they're both in the exact same spot, I just, I just, I don't understand it. Um, it it's, it's, it's hard because he's playing great football and he's getting these penalties thrown on him. And, I mean, I know it's hard to be in the, uh, to officiate, um, but I watch a lot of tape, and it's he's no deeper than any other tackle in the league. I mean, there's other guys that are even further back than he is. So it's it's crazy to see, and hopefully it kind of calms down as the season goes on. But I mean, he's making adjustments, and it seems like even with his adjustments, they're not um, they're not good enough. I guess there it is. Hey, Patrick Mahomes said it best. This is freaking wild, bro. Like we've been saying it too. But the thing about it is, Mike, I'm glad they're coming out and saying something about it. Usually, when the refs do something stupid. Andy won't comment on it much. You don't want to get a fine. Right. The players tend to stray away from saying things about it unless they're super pissed like Travis Kelsey sometimes. 
But yeah, I'm glad they're bringing it up. They're getting in the spotlight. And the reason why, Mike, I think they're thinking the same thing we are. If they don't get out in the spotlight and squash this right now, this is literally the NFL literally prepping everybody for what's going to happen later in a, in a game with implication. That's percent. exactly what's going to freaking happen here. And I think they see it coming too, bro. And they just don't want to deal with it. So they got to go ahead and squash it now. Yeah, it's a thousand percent right. You're, you're completely right. We've seen it yesterday. There was time and time again where if you were going to call it once, you could have called it a second time. And they only chose to call it when? When we moved the chains on a nice catch. When we had a big play to MVS. Didn't call it any other times. And they're not going to. This is completely a hit job. It's 100% targeting. We've been saying this ever since the Detroit game with Mike Tirico and all these idiots that didn't even know the rules of the game. They didn't even know you could set your back foot and move it. And they're right. going to get, look, I was talking today on X. I said, look, this is nothing more but two guys talking on a Thursday night football game. The sheep on social media caught hold of it. And now they're just going to keep doing it. And now the NFL officiating crew is trying to appease them. And in the yeah. meantime, it's fun because they get to knock off uh, a mid-market, you know, dominant dynasty building team <laughs> in Kansas City. Uh, it's a win-win for everybody out here because everybody hates the Chiefs. We're the new Patriots. Nobody gives us credit. They want to see our downfall. They want to see us fail. It's not going to happen. But I even got a clip of Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones coming out talking about this today. Let's see what they had to say about it. Suck it. Suck it. May I do work for you? Suck it. That's what That's they the said only thing it. you can say about it at this point. Like, it's just obvious they're picking on Juwan Taylor, and if you think otherwise, you're just wrong. That time's yours. Let's jump right in. Linz, I'm not even going to try to say it. Andy's a company man. He doesn't like to ruffle the feathers of the officials. Picking on Taylor at a big game could end up costing us. See, that's exactly what you said. But Andy... Not a company man today, Steve. Uh, he spoke yeah. out against it, and it sounds like we were even right. They were they were behind. They they had went in the locker rooms, and instead of game planning for the Chicago Bears, they didn't even need to. They were game planning on how they could catch the officials in a BS lie crackdown that was supposed to go league wide. By the way, I seen a stat on that today. I think it's been called um, 12, 13 times. It's only been called on linemen, I think, five times, and Juwan Taylor's got four of them. Exactly. And I think everyone sees it, Mike, even this guy in the comment here, he said the same thing. They're going to wait. They're going to have this one in their back pocket for a big play later in the season, in the playoffs or something like that. And, and they're just getting you ready for it right now. That way they, when they throw the flag and they screw the chiefs over, they can just say, well, he's been doing this all year and we've been telling him to stop and we've been calling it and he still continues to do it. Yep. That's what they're, that's what they're shooting for. And I think Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid and everyone else knows it. So they're going to try to get this squash. They're lubing it up. They're, <laughs> they're lubing it up. Amani, our boy, an ACU crew member. Finally, a top five defense in the Mahomes era. Time to run it back, baby. Legendary goat. Let me tell you something, Amani. You're right. Uh, we had a video yesterday talking about basically how we've had three weeks and the Chiefs defense just keep on. Phenomenal. Keep on being phenomenal. We've had Chris Jones out. The defense was phenomenal. Uh, we've had Legereus Sneed playing with a bum knee. Fine. Who cares? We don't care about his bum knee. Uh, we get into week three. Nick Bolton, our green dot captain of the defense, goes out. And who comes up? Drew Tranquil, offseason acquisition. Brett Veach swinging them balls around, telling everybody why he picked up the best defensive player in all of free agency right there. Drew Trank will come out, had himself a game. We called him the MVP of the game, Steve. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this defense is legit. That's all you got to know. Everyone's been screaming for a top five defense with Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. Well, you got it. You got it now. And if everybody executes, this team's going to be scary, man. Speaking of top five defenses, look at this. PFF Chiefs comes out today. List of corners with two games. Uh, Recording at an 80-plus PFF grade this season. Trent McDuffie, end of list. That is how good we've been. The Warden locking people down. Steve, we said Trent McDuffie was about to have a breakout year. We said he was about to be uh, – we already said he was a top five nickel corner. He's proven yeah, it. Easily. This guy's up there with the likes of Sauce Gardner. By the end of the year, he is going to be a recognizable name like all the other big corners in the league. And dare I say – this is the superstar that everybody said Brett Veach could never draft in the first round. 
I think we've got him. Yeah, Trent McDuffie's going to be a top five corner, man. He's just too good. You can't deny it. I mean, he missed half of the season last year with a hamstring injury. So, I mean, he, he got a late start in his rookie season, and he's just phenomenal, bro. Right. His only questionable decision, he likes Charbar better than everything else in Kansas City. I think it was the first one he ate. I honestly think that's the only one he had. So he's like, this is great. It's my favorite. Come on, Trent. Live a little bit. I bet he doesn't have the same opinion now. <laughs> Gary. Gary says the refs targeting Taylor is targeting. And we ain't even seen Carl Cheffers yet. <laughs> Gary, God, you're right. No kidding, man. Good Carl Lord. Cheffers would call it every play. Every play. Carl Cheffers is probably, he's probably warming up that whistle right now. He's getting them jaw <laughs> muscles going. He's saying. Carl Cheffers found out they wanted to target a chief and he got all horned up, bro. Yeah. Welcome back to All Horned Up. We're back with another podcast <laughs> for that ass. Here we go. Last comment of the day. Brian Men KC. Hey, dummies. What did he The say? problem was we had almost 100 yards and penalties in that first game. He's talking about Jawan Taylor, by the way. Taylor still got four or five of the same penalties, including one that called back a long ball. A long ball. <laughs> he said long ball. Nobody wants to get rid of him, but he needs to get it together. Uh, Steve, what do you think about uh, Michael Bolton's cousin up here uh, trying to call us <laughs> dummies and try to talk football? Man, he looks like he wants to be like a, a novelist, like Dean Koontz. Or like he's like Stephen King's mentally handicapped brother or something like that. Look at this guy. He writes haikus in his spare time, Mike. This dude's pro yeah, he's probably writing haikus right now. He looks as if Stephen King... Soaked his penis in some water for a little while, marinated it, and then he popped out. That's what it looks like. Took a like. picture of it, made it his profile. Took a picture of it, so let's put it on the profile, baby. Look, hey, pull it back up, Brian. Look at Mr. Rogers here. Look at him. Who? What is? Who has the audacity to go on someone else's channel and be, hey, dummies? Like, like, do you not? We're get so the dumb, point? Mike. We're so dumb that Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes agreed right. with us. We're, we're so, so dumb, dumb that we knew what they were up to before they told everybody what they were up to. Right. We're so dumb that apparently he missed the irony of the entire thing. That, yes, Jawan Taylor did get called for four or five of the same penalty, <laughs> but he's the only guy getting called for it. So kindly um, see sir. yourself out of here. And Steve, uh, crossing half court, alley -oop. Boom! Boom shaka -laka. Shaka -laka. Get, out get out of out. here. Get out, Brian. <laughs> Screw off. <laughs> Steve, we got one more thing to talk about today. Let's bring it up right here. Just a quick list of wide receivers with a lower receiving grade than Justin Watson through three games. Now, here's what I want to say. I'll preface this by saying people are saying Justin Watt. Watson is mid. Uh, we've said it a little bit, but at the same time, I'm tired of everybody saying Justin Watson has no talent whatsoever and that he's only on this because, quote unquote, he's only here because they just all trust him. We've said that before, but we've never said he never had talent. Right. Uh, you need to speak on Justin Watson just a little bit better because why? He leads our team in receiving. Uh, Patrick Mahomes had a 110 QBR rating throwing at him just this week. Uh, they're going to go to him. But this is a little interesting thing that I wanted to bring up, and, and we'll read this together. Just a quick list of wide receivers with a lower receiving grade. Uh, minimum nine receptions. Jamar Chase, lower than Justin Watson. Tyler Lockett, T. Higgins, D.J. Moore, Michael Pittman Jr., Jerry Judy, Gabe Davis, that I said gave, uh, Michael <laughs> Thomas, Robert Woods, Jordan Addison, Christian Kirk, Terry McLaurin. Should we stop? No. Let's keep going. Elijah Moore, Drake London, Michael Gallup, Calvin Ridley, Juju Smith-Schuster, Alan Lazard, Brandon Cooks, Alan Robinson, Tyler Boyd, and everyone's favorite wide receiver we did not select, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Just look at him right here. You know what he's getting ready to say right there, right? Uh, he's getting ready to tell everybody to, uh, yeah. Suck it. Suck it. He's getting ready he's to tell getting them ready to, suck to do it. it. Steve. He's getting, ready, he's getting ready to throw that X over it there. Look, brother. it's one of those things <laughs> where everybody wants to hate on somebody so long. Justin Watson, it's Clyde, it was uh, right. Orlando Brown, it was Andrew Wiley. They always find a new person to pick on. It was Daniel Sorensen. It was... You know, last year they tried to get Tommy Townsend because somebody come out and said he wasn't holding the snap right. Chiefs Kingdom's got to chill. Justin Watson, look, I'm, I'm starting to stick up for Justin Watson. I'm tired of right. the slander. I'm tired of it. Well, that's the I thing, I just think man. we need to move on from this. He's here to we, stay. We call him mid uh, because he's Justin Watson. 
right? And like I've said before, like it drives me insane that Justin Watson is our best receiver, right? Like, it's just like, why is just like, what are we not doing to where Justin Watson's like the best receiver we have on the team? But when it, what it boils down to, man, when you really look into it, we just got to eat our words a little bit here. Justin Watson is a dog. He's out there getting the job done and yeah. he deserves the credit for it. He's been open a lot more than everybody's giving him credit for. He's making some tough catches. He has zero drops on the year. Uh, he run blocks very well. I think when it's all said and done, him, Rasheed Rice, MVS, Sky Moore, those are your four wide receivers that's going to get a lot of playing time. You're going to sprinkle in Kadarius Tony when he's not injured. You may sprinkle in Justin Ross here or there. And that's going to be the way it goes. But that's your top four right now. I don't think Kadarius Tony's in the top four if he can't get himself healthy. He's got to be on the field. He's got to perform. You can't get one target for one reception, negative one yards, and expect to to be a top receiver on a team. Granted, he does have the toe injury. We'll see how it gets when he's 100%. And if he gets back to the role that he had at the end of last year where he kind of was the WR1, he might be able to come back and get it, Mike. But for right now, I'm with you. Yep. So that's going to wrap it up for today. You guys be sure to hit that sub button, hit that like button, click that bell, and we appreciate you. Go Chief. I'm